Welcome to another Teardown at Adafruit. Today we're tackling the Fitbit Force. It's a wearable activity monitor that tracks how active you are, how many steps you climb, the quality of your sleep, that kind of thing, and then reports over Bluetooth to your computer to analyze your stats. Let's see how hard it is to take it apart. The Fitbit was a little bit deceiving. It had four Torx screws that were easily tackled with our screwdriver set, but once I took the screws out, nothing else would budge. I had to cut away the plastic to even get the band off at all, and then inside was more plastic and adhesive. I ended up soaking it off with acetone and then shaving away with my knife until I could finally find the circuit board. Ah, I'm in. Inside there's a tiny, tiny battery, an even tinier OLED display, a little vibrating motor it uses for its alarm clock, and the circuit board itself. Let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the design of the board. Thanks, Becky. Let's check out what's in this Fitbit. Arr, arr, arr. The first part is this OLED here. So this is an OLED screen. And the reason that they use an OLED is first off, if you want to have a small display, OLEDs are much smaller than TFTs. You can get much finer pixel resolution at a trade-off that it's only monochrome. We have OLEDs a lot like this in the store. Um, not as small as this one because there's not a lot of pixels, but uh, we do have ones that are 128 by 64 or 128 by 32 pixels, and they're really high contrast. You can see them in sunlight um, or indoors, and they use very little power because there's no backlight. So that's probably why they use no LED. This is a little motor in a case, and these are the same as the kind of buzzer motors that you find inside of cell phones, and you even see a, a very nice little M symbols for M is for motor. On the back, you've got a little mini battery. This is probably only like maybe 50 milliamp hours at the most, maybe even less than that. You can see how OLED is connected. It's just soldered directly on, probably a hot bar machine, which it just sounds like a good place to go dancing, but it's not. It's actually a machine with a wire that they press the wire up against here and it solders all the pads at the same time. And then you see here all these little TP points. These are test points. And that's, that's really good because this way they can press it into a tester. There's little pogo pins that touch all these pads and tell you if the board is working and if it isn't, what isn't working. So now we can see all the circuitry. There's a lot of circuitry packed in here. It's almost all QFN, QFP, TSOPs, really small. Uh, components. This is an NRF 8001. This is basically the front end for Bluetooth Low Energy. It kind of handles all of the radio and decoding part. It isn't a microcontroller, it's just sort of a front end section, but you can see that they have a nice big antenna. The uh, NRF 8001 is connected over here to a microcontroller. This microcontroller is an uh, STM, which is a ST microcontroller, L151C6. So this is a, a low-cost 32-bit uh, microcontroller. This chip over here, uh, which you can barely see the part numbers on, uh, is a, a TI, Texas Instruments, yeah. BQ24232 um, lithium-ion battery charger. Over here, we've got this little chip here. This is the accelerometer. It's a triple-axis accelerometer, and that's what's used to sense motion, um, how many steps you've taken, how fast you're moving. Um, unfortunately, the part got scratched a little bit. Uh, either they scratched it or maybe in disassembly, not, not sure. So we couldn't identify it, but if I had to guess, it's uh, probably a low-cost ex accelerometer from ST or maybe an LIS 3DH model, you know, probably like a $1 triple axis accelerometer. And then on the back here, there's a little bit of a, a victim of the teardown. To take it apart, we had to pull off this altimeter. Um, so this is a sensor that can detect a barometric pressure, which will let you know how high up you are. Uh, because barometric pressure changes with altitude, as you learned in science class in eighth grade. Um, so it's got a port on it, and it went over here. It's probably a very basic resistive or capacitive altimeter that is then uh, sensed by the microcontroller. So there you go. You've got all these sensors, OLED, microcontroller, Bluetooth, antenna, battery charging, a whole bunch of stuff on the circuit board. A really nice design. Sad altimeter that got torn off. <laughs> nice Fitbit. For this and many other teardowns, we use the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand and the tiny Torx bit from this 38-piece screwdriver set. 
So I'm sure glad we don't have to try to put that Fitbit back together and that I still have one safely assembled on my wrist to wear around. But if you have an idea for a wearable you want to see torn down on another episode, post about it in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube for another Wearable Wednesday.